All right, we're back. We're on page 190 of talking about parametric equations. We're going to talk about conic sections. We've already talked about them a little bit, but we went kind of quickly because I knew that we were going to come back to this. Um, so you may know a lot of this already, and that's great if you do. Uh, so let's see what we can do. First and foremost, we're going to talk about parabolas, which actually, if you remember, those were the last of the conics that we talked about when we learned conics, like the first time through. The reason we're starting with them is that uh, they're like kind of the most straightforward to parameterize. Uh, and the reason for that is that when you're dealing with a, a parabola, you either have x as a function of, you have y as a function of x, or you have x as a function of y. And because of that, what you can do is just like make your simple substitution. So what I'm gonna do is, for example, here, this right now to me is telling me that x is actually a function of y. If x is a function of y, it makes sense to just let y equal t. Therefore, let y equal t, and life is good, right? So here we go. I'm going to say x is equal to something, but y is equal to t. If y is equal to t, then x is going to be, I have to bring this over. So I'm going to say it is 5 minus 1 6, the quantity, t plus 3 squared. And then t is an element of the reals. That'll do it, right? So I'm going to graph these in a second. I'm going to graph them in GeoGebra so we can like really watch things happen. Um, but that does it. The problem says that we're supposed to actually write two sets of parametric equations and we want to choose our parameterization so the orientation is reversed. Think about what's happening right now. So for this particular problem, because y is equal to t, we know that if t increases, y increases, which means in general, we're going, uh, you're moving up. So we're going to be moving up, right? So you start low and then as t increases, y increases, so you, you move up, right? So, so the rate of change of t is po of y is positive, I guess, like you're, you're always increasing. Um, so what I'm going to do to reverse that is I'm going to let y equal negative t, and then we'll be moving down. So I'm going to let y equal negative t, and then this will be 5 minus 1, 6. I'm just going to write negative t plus 3, and then squared, and t is going to be an element of the reals. And then for this choice, t is, why am I highlighting that? Uh, if t increases, y is actually going to decrease. Therefore, we're moving down. So the choices that we made will determine the, the direction in which you're tracing this out. Like you don't really have a choice about what x is doing. X is, is just stuck there. It has no uh, kind of like free will in this case. Whatever y does, x just has to follow along. It has to be 5 minus 1 6 of whatever y is plus 3 squared or however you want to look at that. So I'm going to switch over to GeoGebra and just like graph this right now uh, just to see what I mean by that so, or to show you what I mean. I think I know what I mean, but we'll see. Um, so I'm gonna wait for this. I always like to click here so that I have access to the full, uh, full entry bar there. It's unobscured. Uh, curve is what we use. 5 minus 1 sixth quantity t plus 3 squared, comma, t, comma, t is going to be the parameter. Let's go like negative five to five. Okay. And then I'm just going to duplicate this because they're very, well, let me put a point on this. A of, let's use V as our slider. When I hit enter, it's going to make a slider. Okay. Oh, and the slider goes negative five to five. So not a bad choice. All right. So let's let the slider increase. When the slider increases, so when the parameter increases, the value of y should increase, which makes you go generally up. And then x has no choice, right? Like y is just on a mission. When t increases by one, y increases by one. What does x have to do to make that happen? x is just like the guy running around behind the scenes making everything happen so you stay on this path. Because y is obsessed with going from negative five to positive five based on our parameterization. It's just going to do that. X has to be the one that like does the heavy work to keep you on the parabola here. So you can see as T increases or as our parameter increases, you're just moving up. So, I mean, that's what I was expecting to happen. 
Okay, so now I'm going to duplicate this and just change it to negative and you're going to see like something. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be what you expect. Negative. Uh, I got to change two of these. Hold on. Negative. Negative. Okay, same path. Press enter. I'm going to put a point on this. So I'm going to do B of V. And then let's put this back at negative five. Okay, so when the parameter is negative five, I do the negative of that, so I'm at positive five. So actually, this is doing the opposite of what I thought it was gonna do. This is actually doing exactly what it, what maybe you, maybe your mind is telling you it was gonna do. I don't know, let's see. It. So in, for our second parameterization, when the parameter increases by one, the Y value decreases by one. And so Y in this case is like hell bent on going from positive five to negative five, just, it's just going to do it. And X has no choice. It's got to like keep you on the parabola. So let's press, press play. And you can see one's moving up, one's moving down. Uh, there's going to be a time at which they intersect, which is zero. And then uh, they go like that. So we did it. We reversed the orientation. Um, so, and that was our mission. So I'm going to go back and uh, try the next one. And let's see if we can do it. Okay. So that one, like, uh, that was not my intuition as what as to what was going to happen. What I thought was going to happen, I'll erase this in a second. I thought it was going to be like this. And then when we did the other one, I thought it was going to do this, but it didn't. It, it went back to, it was like here and here. And I, I did not expect that. Um, so whatever. I mean, that's pretty neat. So it's, it's always neat when you get like a result you weren't expecting, I think. I mean, not, not so much on a quiz or a test, but like, when you're learning, it's pretty neat if you can do that. All right, is y a function of x or is x a function of y? Well, which one's easier to solve for? I'm gonna say that y is easier to solve for, right? It's eight minus x squared minus two x divided by negative four. So when you look at it, you can see that y is a function of x. So it makes sense to let x equal t in like the easiest parameterization. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna say, uh, so, Parameter one, I probably should have labeled them last time, but I did not. Uh, I'm gonna say X is T, and then Y doesn't have a choice, right? So X, if T increases by one, X increases by one. If T increases by 20, X increases by 20. It's just like a very linear relationship. Y has to do whatever it needs to do to keep you on this parabola. So it's gotta do a lot of work. It's gotta do eight, and then minus T squared, minus two T, divided by negative four. You could distribute the negative into the numerator if you prefer which is actually probably easier to deal with. Um, T is an element of the reals. So we don't need to write it down, but um, as T increases, X increases, which means uh, you're moving to the right. You're sort of like generally moving to the right. As T increases, X is gonna increase. Um, and then if we wanna switch that, Let's do the other thing. We'll say that X is negative T. And so Y is going to be eight. And then negative T squared is just T squared again. Negative two times negative T is plus two T over negative four. Your life is definitely easier if you just distribute that uh, negative. But I didn't. Um, this time, as T, in, it's always as T increases what happens. As T increases, X, uh, why am I putting a dash? X decreases. So what are we doing? You're moving left. Right? Because if X is decreasing, you're moving to the left. I'm going to grab both of these. And then um, I will come back, I think, in the next video and like do the rest of this page. So let's go back to GeoGebra and see if, what can we do? I'm just going to turn these off. Go away. All right, so I already have my slider for V, so we're gonna use T curve, T comma, eight minus, so one of the things you can do, let me, let me actually do this. So I'm gonna define F of X to be uh, eight minus X squared minus two X over negative four. So the reason I'm doing that is that I want to be able to just reference this. So I'm gonna turn it off. Like this is the path that we're gonna follow. I'm gonna turn that off. And I'm going to say curve t comma f of t, right? That's all I need to do. That's what happens when you plug t into f of x, you get f of t. t is the parameter. I want to go from like negative five to five. 
And I'm going to put a point on that. So C of V. Let's move our slider back to uh, back to negative five. Okay. So if I hit play, it's going to move to the right, which is what I was expecting. And now what I'm expecting, because I've updated my, uh, got to update your prior assumptions, right? Now I'm thinking I'm going to start here and go that way. Um, so what I'll do, I'm going to duplicate this and I just have to make some minor changes. I need to make this negative T and then make this negative T. And you can see, same exact curve. I'm going to say D of V. Let's go back to negative five and hit play. So the point D is moving to the left. The point C is moving to the right. We expected that. So this is how you can parameterize a parabola. Like it's, uh, it's really straightforward, I think. You don't really need any trig functions or anything, uh, which we're going to need for ellipses and hyperbolas and circles. So uh, it turns out the parabola is the most straightforward of these. So let's go back to the notes so you can, I don't know, take a look one more time. Um, and it does say, you know, when you're doing this, so a little highlight action, uh, just, just let x equal t or y equal t, depending on what type of function you're dealing with. If y is a function of x, let x equal t. If x is a function of y, let y equal t. And you basically got it done. So uh, I'll be back in the next video where we will do a couple more things. So I will see you there.